quickly with no time to waste. Elliot Michael Hornby, who joins us from the Capitol, prior to going into their big meeting this morning. Michael, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Bill. All right. Lots to get to, big guy. So let's start tackling a few of these uh, <laughs> chunks, one chunk at a time here. Let's, Since we just had Teresa McCabe in and Dean Thomas from the hospital, let's talk about certificate of need. Uh, Eric Householder in the first segment, the House Majority Leader, mentioned that there were some skinny bills that were going through on certificate of need uh, for consideration. Are you aware of any changes that might take place? I am not very aware of, uh, I know there are some skinny, I haven't seen them come across um, or, or read any in detail. I know there was one for imaging, um, something like that, but uh, I haven't seen um, too many um, come through. I know the pregnancy uh, or the uh, birthing centers birthing passed center. earlier in the center in the uh, session. All right, very good. And uh, let's get to a couple of the things that uh, were discussed also before previously, and that would have to do first and foremost with the big tax cut legislation. It looks like it seems everybody agrees this will pass fairly close to the form that the Senate sent it to you folks. And uh, that's the understanding I have, too. I think it, it will be pretty darn close to what uh, the Senate said, sent over. I haven't heard any major rumblings um, or objections. All right. Now, for your committee, you're on education. Let's talk about some of the education bills that you think are going to be signed, Mike. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I, I could name some, or you can offer some up that you're pretty you familiar can, you with. Go ahead and name them, and I'll address them as you go, if you like. All right. The Third Grade Success Act. So I think, actually, um, we amended in, in the House the K-3 through um, AIDS. Uh, we just amended it into the governor's bill, the uh, Grow Your Own um, teacher. We amended that in. Um, that is, we believe, is a better version of what it, it kind of starts with third grade and then it goes to second to first. So the, the House committee all kind of came together and amended that back into the governor's bill, um, which we think will have a better shot at getting it through um, because it's on the governor's bill. Now, before I move to the other bills, Bill and Maria, if you have any questions specifically about the Third Grade Success Act, go ahead and ask those now before I go to another bill. You're both good? Go to another bill. Okay. HB 3084 updates various provisions of charter school code. It makes charter schools eligible for school safety fund money, allows higher education institutions to apply, organize a charter school, and enter into a charter school contract. Let's talk about HB 3084 and charter schools, Michael. I think they'll pass. I think the, the governor, will, I think that'll, that'll go through great. What do you like about it, if anything? What do you not like about it, if anything? Um, I think just giving uh, the charter schools the same access that uh, public schools have is, is, is what we need. Charter schools may determine their own staff qualification and certification requirements, and the per-pupil basic foundation allowance will go from 90% to 99% and include state, federal, and local share funds. The home county board will keep the remaining 1% for administrative expenses. Was that other 10% the amount of money that was supposed to stay behind to go to public schools, Mike? Um, it, not really. I think it, the, the money just follows the child, and I think uh, we need to give uh, the public charter schools, and, and they are public schools, we need to give them the access to the funds just like a public school. So um, it gives them the resources they need to do what they need. Mike, before you go, uh, the uh, uh, it's determined staffing, the charter schools determine staffing, and I assume that's independent of the public schools. The staffing, is that as far as this, the number of folks or the qualification? Uh, I think it's giving them the freedom to do what they think is best. And I think that's the, the intent of public charter schools was to try something different. Um, and obviously I wasn't here when that, when that original legislation passed, but I think the intent of a public charter school was to give them some freedom to do the things that they wanted. And, and that's what this bill did, was give them some freedom of what they wanted to do. Um, there were some restrictions in there that uh, were hindering them, that, that that Wayne Clark kind of brought up, and he knows much more about this than I do, because um, his wife is actually, uh, I believe, the assistant principal at the public charter school. So there were some things that had come up in the last year that they were restricted and couldn't get, um, they couldn't get licenses for, for certain teachers because 
they hadn't done X, Y, or Z, and it was more of a technical thing. It wasn't really anything major. Do the public charter schools stand as individual entities, or are they all reporting to a certain umbrella parent? Uh, well, they report to the um, public charter school commission um, down here. They, they, you know, you have to. They do report to people. Um, they just don't uh, report to the Department of Education, I believe. Okay, so the the, the staffing, both the number of staffing and the qualification of staffing would be determined at that level. Yes, okay. I believe so. Maria, anything on this? Not on that. All right, the charter school kids can also participate due to this bill in public school electrocurricular. There you go. I was stubble field with that one. In extracurricular activities at other public schools if their school does not offer those. Uh, Mike, are there any restrictions on this? For instance, if you are a Martinsburg resident who goes to a charter school in Jefferson County, uh, and but they don't offer this particular sport, do you have to play that sport at the closest local public school that you would have attended, or can you pick yes. whatever school you want to go still, to? It's still geographically from from your, your residence. All right, very good. Uh, HB 3224 makes West Virginia Junior College eligible to accept promise scholars it passed unanimously by the way and is yes. in the senate all right that seems fairly straightforward is there anything yeah, else yeah, about I think, that i think that one's uh cruising through all right h uh, sb 422 which i suppose is now in front of the house and this is the bill that requires schools to publish up-to-date county adopted curriculum on the school's publicly accessible website or the counties if the school doesn't have one new or revised curriculum would have to be posted within 30 days of adoption almost basically like public notice laws yeah um that one has not come up in committee obviously we we're taking up senate bills um at we, we canceled our meeting for today because today's the, the crossover day so we didn't want any craziness uh, or shenanigans going on in the last meeting um, um, our last education meeting had a couple of things happen uh, from the other side that, that it took us off guard so we canceled our education meeting today we'll start taking up Senate bills I believe Friday is our next meeting I did see that bill I think it needs some, some clarification and some discussion uh, but we will discuss that in committee and kind of decide w what's best for that to get moving forward. All right, Maria, free reign. You can ask anything you want. Now. Oh, boy. Okay, Mike, <laughs> talk about, um, you know, talk about what happened with the locality pay bill. We, mm. um, we uh, listened to your good friend John Hardy give a really impassioned speech. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that was on the floor. I just heard a clip of it. And um, Delegate Householder says um, he's very encouraged, but yet it fell short by... Six votes, is that right? Um, I so mean, yeah, it fell short by six. John did have a uh, very impassioned speech on the floor, which was met by uh, another very good friend of mine down here, Mr. Mark Dean, who said, you know, he'll 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 give us locality pay when we get, when we give up coal severance tax. Um, which that, that makes no sense. It doesn't even equate. <laughs> well, hang on now. Um, you have to realize. Um, we're talking geographics, right? I've always said on, on to you guys, I don't think locality pay is going anywhere. But when you look at the votes, we're getting closer and closer and closer every time. Now, if there was to be a discussion or a, if the 15 counties that, or 15, maybe even more, uh, the co guys is what I call them, if they're willing to, uh, Give us locality pay. I'm sure Berkeley County wouldn't mind giving up coal severance tax because I don't think we receive that much. I think it's about 600 grand, maybe less. I think at the city level, they I think they told me uh, when we had uh, Baker in and then Knowles, I think it's about 60,000 at the city level. I, don't, I would have to ask at the county level. Um, yeah, and, and here's the thing: if 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 um, and I, you know, I, I pretty much get along with everybody. And if I can start the conversation on a um, on a compromise, um, I think it is that important to the Panhandles and the border counties if we can get some compromise um, there. And then you know, I I had a very frank conversation last night after the vote with some of the um, the Southern guys. Uh, I think there's something to be um, hashed out over the next year. You know, here's the thing I can never understand about that comeback, which is the one that was thrown out there uh, about, so are we incentivizing 
people to move to the most prosper, prosperous areas of the state. Yep. One of the one of the uh, I guess uh, the guy out of Marion said that Mallow. Yes. And and you know I don't know why heads are so thick that this is a comeback for people. You're not in. Incent- no one is going to move from McDowell County to <laughs> Berkeley County. Well, they because they can make four thousand dollars more, but yeah. pay three hundred thousand more for a house. Yeah. Why is that so hard to understand? Um, Rob, I, I think we live in two different worlds. Um, you know, I I can I can tell you from the, the even just around uh, when I get out outside of Charleston, if I'm driving around the the uh, the the worlds we live in are, are totally different. Um, and, and there's just no understanding of what our problems are in Berkeley County, and, and they don't see them as problems. They see them as you know, we're a bunch, you know, we're successful. We're we've got all the money, we've got all the the, the, the jobs, we've got all the things. So I think we just live in a different world, and we don't understand each other. I think we've got a math problem. Is what we have. This is, this is um, basic math. <laughs> This is here's how much you have. Here's how much we, you owe. Here's how much is left. And, and we had this in, uh, in in last night in one of our bills where we were um, doing circuit judges and, and Berkeley County's you know, getting some more and we're getting more magistrates. And unfortunately, those counties are losing. And and you know, there's counties that have the whole county has six thousand people. Um, you know, you look at. And has a circuit judge, a single circuit judge, and 20, I mean, and twenty-seven I, magistrates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and so um, I think we, I think we've made progress. We've showed the numbers, and 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 it didn't come from the Panhandle, which was great. It came from somebody down here that crunched the numbers and said, "This is the facts. These are how many cases uh, are being run," and. It's just undeniable that these are the, these are these are the numbers. These are what they're running. Um, these are the the caseloads they have. And, and you know, there's certain counties that have a huge problem with crime, so they're, they're or abuse, and their case cases are much longer. So they do deserve you know whatever. But um, I think everybody understands the the math now, and and I think we're we're going to get what we want. Well, 56 don't understand the math because they voted against it. <laughs> Bill Stubblefield. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Good morning, Mike. Uh, Good morning, Bill. We had uh, uh, Eric Household on earlier, and Eric, as always, gave us a lot of good information. But he raised one subject that results in confusion. Not only uh, myself, but off-air, uh, uh, Rob had comparable confusion. And that deals... And you're hoping I'm going to clear it up? <laughs> well, I, I'm, we have I'm, full I, faith in confidence. I'm hoping you will. And oh, that's, my Lord. That's the that's a homestead exemption. Uh, we currently, uh, every veteran has access to homestead exemption now once you reach a certain age. Uh, mm-hmm. But with the tax credit that was uh, that was uh, uh, passed by the Senate, there is, for those veterans with 90 to 100 percent disability, they get a tax break uh, on their personal income tax. Now, these two, I believe, are separate issues altogether. Well, uh, they get they get a uh, homestead exemption. Well, everybody right? gets a homestead exemption. Yeah. But now what's this new, what's the tax law for the ones 90 to 100 percent? That's not going to impact the other veterans that are currently, that are not under disability. No, I I don't think it impacts them. I think it it, it actually brings in veterans who are below 65 is is kind of what what they I think that was the intent. But do not quote me if, 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 you know, that is a very small part of that that bill and i didn't really pay attention that much to it i certainly will look into it now that you brought it up yeah. um but my understanding was it if you were 90 percent um a veteran 90 90 percent uh what disabled or whatever yeah. it is they brought you into the fold for that homestead exemption so yeah at early um, in 65 that makes a lot of sense mike and, I, and that's yeah. that's i think that was okay. the intent was yeah. hey we don't really we have this for 65 year old and yeah. older and in and, and things like that i think they were thinking you know what there are veterans out there that that aren't 65 that meet this criteria and we want to include them good point okay and i think it was the number was about thirteen thousand, from what i i I, by the way mike for some background information on this whole coal severance uh we'll keep ours and you can have yours kind of thing alan davis texted me back and said the amount of coal severance Berkeley County received this year was about two hundred fifty thousand, which yeah. is which is the highest it's been for the past three four years. The lowest and, has and been around one hundred and ten thousand. 
And, and I know, I know, Berkeley County. You know, it's not like we. It's not. I'm not saying we don't need the money, but we'd certainly give up two hundred fifty thousand if we could pay our, 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 our state workers more. Well, keep working in, in on your opinion. angle, man. Yeah, um, and I know we've got a EMS um, bill coming through um, today that um, I'm excited we'll be getting um, some money back for, for EMS and firefighters. Um, and I think we're, um, it's not going to be a tax increase. It's going to be, um, you, you'll, see it, you'll see the amendment on the floor today. It's going to be exciting news. Is your wine bill going to be signed? It came out of government organization. It's on second reading in the Senate today. Um, I don't expect any issues with it. Um, the Senate doesn't put stuff on the floor to, to fail, so I expect that to cruise right through and be signed by the governor by the end of the week. You can bring some Italian wines into the area. And, Beautiful. And hope. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, hey, yeah, Mike, it is with it. Quick yeah. question. I know you've yeah. got to go quickly, but the... No, um, i got some time. Okay, so the House yesterday passed this bill for a Homeland Security Inspector General, and I, from what I'm reading, it um, it's a direct response to this issue of um, wrongdoing within the within the state police. What would you say to people? Are you creating another level of government if if Republicans are looking to you know pull in the reins? Is this not um, is this not adding more government instead of subtracting? Well, and Mary, you got a good point, but at the same time, you need somebody to be able to look within a department and make sure we're doing things right. We don't want people just um, doing what they want and abusing their power. So, um, if, as explained to me, this was, was needed. Uh, I don't really like that they're, they're within the department. They report to the department head, but um, it's kind of one of those things where you, you've got to get it started, get get something going so that you've got somebody that can do that, that kind of uh, investigation. Gotcha. Mike, how did you vote on House Bill 3270? That was a 5245 vote in favor of, and this is the bill that limits financial damages in cases where injured workers can prove deliberate intent by employers who cut corners on safety. Uh, I actually voted for. So th- what that does, and let's just be honest, it, it was a terrible bill the way it came up, but the, the compromise was reached. Um, this is for non-economic damages. So you could go up to five, uh, up to uh, five hundred thousand, I believe, or double your economic damages. So um, the, what the the intent of the bill was to to for insurance companies to be able to know what those what that was right so it, it could stabilize workers compensation across these industries what we didn't want to do was put a tiny little value on a, a life or, or somebody who because there are big manufacturers and, and coal companies out there that may not, not be good actors so um, I think this was a good compromise between the, the workers, the um, insurance companies, and the businesses. So, is it possible? So four. Is it possible to collect more than a half a million dollars in this? Yes. On this? Yes, because you would get all your economic damages, right? So, uh, a lawyer would have to prove that you know, say, a twenty-five-year-old is losing sixty years of, of work or forty years of work. Um, all your economic damages, your medical, all that's paid. You would get your economic damages, and then on top of that, you would be able to get double your economic damages or um, 500000 And previously, so. there was no cap at all. Previously, there was no cap, um, which, gave, which made the insurance really high for certain industries. Um, but, so this, sh- but shouldn't insurance be high for industries which are intentionally ignoring safety issues that can kill should. and dismember people? It should, and the amount of cases that this is actually happening is very, very small. Um, I think that, you know these, this is this is like the upper big branch cases, um, and it's it's not per occurrence; it's per person too. So, uh, I think they reached a um, a good compromise, and that's why I uh, I moved to a yes. Why did this need to be addressed if it's if it happens in very few cases and there are very few bad actors? Um, I didn't sponsor the bill. I didn't put it forward um i was you know asked to vote on it and i had to educate myself on it i couldn't walk out if you will so um i don't know why it needed to be addressed i just know it was before me and i had to address what i thought was best one minute left with mrs Rahombi. any final questions 
Bill, you breathed deeply, but yeah, you didn't say I, I was it. trying to find what I was looking for. The, the Religious Protection Act, uh, yeah. uh, that uh, that passed the House, uh, and it's, I think, 3042, and it went to the Senate's passed there as well. Uh, did you vote for that, Mike? You know, I did, Bill, and I, I, it was very, it was one of those things where I was very, very wary of what I was voting for, and I wanted to make sure, so I had to do a lot of homework, and uh, this, this, Act has been in, in, in federal law for quite some time, over 20, 30 years, whatever it was. And, and that's really what it came down to. It, it, it's a, it's a, a law that says that the judge in cases like these has to go through a certain amount of steps to, to protect, um, you know, the person or, or that person and their religion. So it wasn't, for me, it wasn't a vote against any body. It was a vote for um, the, the federal law that's already been in, 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 in statute. I did not realize it was federal law already. So Yes, it's been, uh, I think, 1994. So, so, so then why, does the, why do the states have to pass it? So, well, here's the thing. From what I uh, understood was, you know, in order to get this this protection, you've got to go all the way up to the Supreme Court, or you've got to go all the way up into a federal case. This now just makes it that, you know, people in West Virginia or judges in West Virginia can follow this uh, rule of law to go, okay, th is this what happened? There, there's three different standards that they have to be met um, to make a ruling. Right. And, and it's really a, and I, they, they use the word quite a bit. I forget what it was, but it's a, a it's a, a standard that the, a judge can use. It's not a vote for or a vote against any person. Mike, go to your meeting. I do have to go to my meeting. I <laughs> pleasure talking to you. I wish we had more time. Thanks, Mike. Thank you.